Today, we're going to talk about the first year law students exam, sometimes called the baby bar. Um, you know, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about calling it the baby bar because, yeah, this is definitely a passable exam, um, but it is kind of challenging. And I think it dismisses some of that to call it the baby bar, right? Yeah, it's not as many subjects as the bar exam that you'll take later on, but um, it's still a challenging exam. And I think one of the things that makes it challenging is that most folks who are taking the baby bar are also, you know, they're going to school part-time or they're balancing, you know, many other um, uh, uh, things in their life. And so how do we schedule life plus preparing for the baby bar? And that's what I want to talk about today is how do we um, set up this schedule and make it work? Now, I presume that some of you are going to be taking bar max, which is terrific. There is a calendar available to you in your welcome packet with a suggested schedule. Um, but hey, you know what? Even if you're taking another bar prep course, you're probably going to get a schedule. Um, that schedule is going to be set up to work for you know the greatest number of people. I'm going to encourage you to personalize it uh, as much as possible today. Um, you know, this is a suggested schedule that is designed to um, you know kind of help you. Uh, get started thinking about how you want to um, uh, spend your time as you're preparing. But you can and you should take that schedule and make it personal to you and your needs and your talents, right? Um, I really love CRIM. CRIM is kind of my jam. Contracts? Eh. So maybe I spend more time in contracts and not as much time in CRIM, right? Because uh, you know I need to take that and personalize it to myself. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. So the first thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is to start with, you know, just a list of what's going on in your life that is what I would call non-negotiable. This is the stuff that you can't move it and it's got to get done, right? Um, then I want you to think about when are you doing those things and put those on your calendar. Uh, and then you want to go ahead and schedule in your study time. Uh, and, and in my mind, there's really kind of two types of studying, right? There's what I would call knowledge acquisition, which is, you know, going back and like, hey, it's been a minute since I looked at CRIM. Let me look at that again. Or it's been a minute since, you know, um, I talked thought about the mailbox rule. Let me go review that real quick. And then there's what I would call practice, which is, okay, it's time to actually look at how does the mailbox rule get tested? Or, you know, what's the deal with the felony murder rule? Um, let me go take a look at that again. Uh, and you want to make sure you have that, those. Uh, and I'm going to break each of these things down in a little bit more detail in a minute. But, you know, once you've kind of made a list of this is all the stuff I have to do, uh, and and then you've you've put that on your calendar, and then you've you've put in where you think you're going to be able to study. I also want you to think about what are tasks that take a lot of time or energy. What are tasks that are you know maybe a little bit less intense for you, right? So if you are a morning person and you are waking up bright eyed and bushy tailed, you know five a.m., five thirty, six. Um, more power to you. That is not me, but go for it. Uh, and maybe that's the time that you're doing some of those tasks that are more challenging for you, right? Maybe that's when you're tackling that mailbox rule problem. Um, or maybe that's when you're doing you know, your essay writing, right? Because that's when you feel the most alert. If you're more like me and you're kind of uh, you know, a bit of a late afternoon kind of person where you know, three, four, five o'clock, that's really when you're hitting your stride, Maybe that's when you're putting the things that are more challenging for you, the things that are going to take a little bit more of your time and your intensity, right? Um, so think about both, you know, what is what's on your to-do list, the times you have available, and what's easier or harder or what takes more time or attention, right? So, you know, if you are that morning you know, person, that early bird, then maybe something that is a little bit less intellectually demanding you're doing in the evening, right? Maybe that's when you're re reviewing those flashcards that Celeste showed you, um, or, you know, listening to a lecture, if that's kind of less energy, you know, requiring from you. Um, but think about, you know, kind of the, the 
sort of natural ebb and flow of your own um, uh, uh, energy levels, right? And I want you to be honest with yourself, right? Like, don't, if you know you're not a morning, you know, what do we, what do we say? An early bird, you're not a morning person. Don't say to yourself, like, I'm going to get up every morning at 5 a.m. And, and write an essay. Like, you're not going to. Don't, like, you know, because what happens is then you you write that part down and you don't make time later on to do that because, you know, you're you're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do that at five in the morning. Well, you're not going to do it at five in the morning. So I want you to really be honest with yourself about where your capacities are, what you are good at, what you're struggling with, and realistic, right, about, you know, what else is going on in your life. One of the things that I think um, Barmax does really well is to, to look at what's commonly tested, to look at what you know comes up over and over again, and to say this is where you should focus your time. Um, but you know, hey, uh, regardless of what study program you use, you should be thinking about you know what do I need more time with, and you know how do I get better at doing whatever that is, right? So that's kind of the basics. Let's delve in a little bit more deeply. So there's there's what I'm going to call like the non-negotiables of life, right? Which for a lot of us is going to be work, right? Whether you're working full-time, part-time, whether you're working Monday through Friday, or you know, you're working um, Wednesday through Sunday, it doesn't matter. Like you're going to have work of some kind, right? Or Maybe you have family obligations, right? You're caring for children or you're caring for an aging parent or an ill spouse or, you know, maybe everybody's fine, but it's just you've got time that you need to be spending on kids, family, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Maybe it's both. Maybe there's work and kids or aging parent, whatever it is. You got to do those things. It doesn't change just because you're you're getting ready to take the, the baby bar. Um, same thing with chores and errands. So, you know, hey, maybe, you know, we, we all have to go grocery shopping. We all have to vacuum. We all have to pay bills, that kind of thing. Now, brief digression here into, you know, that part about being honest with yourself and thinking about, you know, how long things take and all of that. You know, don't be afraid to do what you can to simplify your life now, right? Um you know, maybe what you do is you start using, you know, a grocery delivery service like Instacart or, you know, some of the grocery stores have their own uh, delivery programs. Um, Maybe you put your bills on automatic bill pay so you don't even have to think about it. Maybe you get somebody to help you clean for the next few months, right? Whatever that looks like, Uh, you know, scout out places where you can study and the kids can play. Um, you know, I, I used to go to uh, McDonald's because you could get, you know, a caffeinated soda. Diet Coke is kind of my jam. And my son could play in the ball pit while I studied, right? Sure, why not? Or there are indoor playgrounds. Or if you're in a place with a really temperate climate, you, maybe you're looking at outside playgrounds, right? But kind of right now, think about what can I do to simplify my life during this upcoming time? Um, don't be afraid to talk to your family about what's coming up, right? Um, I'm going to bet that many of us are first generation lawyers. And so, you know, our our family is kind of like, okay, you finished your first year. That's terrific. Now we get you back, right? And the answer is like, no, I got to go study. <laughs> um, and, and you want to be honest with them so they understand what's what's coming up for you. And your families are going to want to be supportive or likely will want to be supportive. But sometimes they don't know what that looks like. So sometimes it's helpful to just have a conversation with them about, you know, um, what you need. Uh, Does that look like, you know, having your mom call you every day and make sure you're studying? Or does that look like, mom, you know, I need you to not call me except on Sundays when we'll talk for a few hours, right? Or or whatever it is that, you know, would be most efficient for you. But um, you know, think about what that looks like. Think about what you can simplify, but recognize that some of this stuff is just non-negotiable. Um, I'm also going to say there are some things that we need to do just as human beings. One of those is sleep. So for a lot of us, we kind of say, hey, I'm running behind on something. I'll just stay up later and, uh, you know, work on it this evening and get a little bit less sleep. 
So one thing I'm going to say is that sleep is when your brain forms memories, um, we think. And it, we know for sure it's, it's when your brain sort of clears out um, this one particular protein that makes you forgetful, right? But so we know that sleep is actually super important to learning. So if you're not getting enough sleep, and you're trying to spend a bunch of time, you know, learning, it's actually going to undercut those efforts, right? Uh, you need that sleep in order to be um, productive, in order to learn. So, you know, make sure you're getting an adequate amount of sleep. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're sleeping, you know, hours and hours and hours each night, but whatever is required for you to be functional, make sure you're getting that. Um, same thing with exercise. We know exercise is actually really important to, um, you know, just sort of our general well-being. Um, but there's also been some research that suggests it's important for learning. Uh, and so, you know, they, they did this study probably about 15 years ago where they took fifth graders and they had one group listen to a lecture while they were sitting still and another group listened to the lecture while they were um, on a treadmill. And what they found was that those kids who listened to the lecture while they were walking retained more. So in addition to the fact that exercise is going to help you manage anxiety and deal with your stress and um, all of that, it's also going to help you learn, right? Really important. Um, you need downtime, just time to, to, you know, watch TV with your friends or, um, you know, eat ice cream in your pajamas or go, you know, walk around the mall with your family, like whatever it is that brings you sort of joy and helps you feel connected. And it's time that your brain kind of gets to, uh, you know, go be a human being with, you know, you can't just be a bar prep machine. You also have to be a human being. So being kind of, you know, aware of that and making sure you have time for it, right? Whatever that looks like, make sure you have time for it. Um, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to write all of this stuff down. So you're going to say, you know, hey, I got to work eight to five every day. I got to put the kids to sleep, you know, at 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. I got to, you know, make sure I have my Sunday afternoons for running chores. I need six hours of sleep every night. You're going to make sure you write all of this stuff down um, because we want to make sure that this stuff gets in there. Once you've done that, you're going to have kind of, you know, some blocks of time that you can study. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, the, the kind of thing that you can do while you're working, while you're managing your, your family life, um, while you're still being a human. Uh, and, as you do that, you're going to see kind of what are the times that are left to you. Um, and in a bit, I'll kind of show you an example of what that might look like. Um, but, you know, think, think about, you know, put in those non-negotiables, kind of make, the, make a list of those, and then start thinking about the actual study and prep, right? So the first thing that you want to do is you want to think about, you know, um, your individual strengths and weaknesses. Like I said, whichever bar prep company you you go with, whether that's Barmax or another one, they're going to give you a schedule. You know, that's a calendar, and it kind of tells you what to study when. That's your jumping off point. Um, I think, as I mentioned, one of the things that Barmax does really well is to say this is what you have to know in order to be successful. So you're not going to get inundated with you know a huge stack of books. You're going to get you know. This is the, the thing you need to know in order to be successful. Um, once you look at that, I want you to think about what are the subjects that you know well, right? So maybe you're like me and you're like, Crim, Crim's my jam. I like it. It's good stuff. Fabulous. You know, kind of, kind of have that in your mind. But maybe, you know, hey, contracts is okay, but you don't love it. Okay. Maybe you need a little bit more time with contracts. And going back to that part about being honest with ourselves, one of the things that most of us are going to do from time to time is we're going to say, you know, I like CRIM. I'm good at CRIM. I want to spend a little bit more time with CRIM because I like CRIM and I'm good at CRIM. Here's the thing. Taking that, you know, hour or three hours or whatever that you spent on CRIM uh, and spending it instead on something that you're not good at 
you're going to get a much greater return on your investment, right? If you focus on what you're not good at. And guys, don't just think about like overall subjects, right? You know, I did really well in my torts class and I, you know, didn't do as well in cram or whatever it is. Think about individual subjects within those topics, right? So maybe, yeah, you, you know, you felt pretty good about torts, but, you know, um, defamation, what the heck was even going on there? Or products liability, what? And you need to go back over that stuff. Great. Make a note of that. As you're kind of thinking about your individual strengths and weaknesses, I want you to also think about the skills, right? What are skills that you are good at? Maybe you're a really excellent memorizer. You know, if you just look at something, you know, once or twice, you're going to be able to remember it. Great. Maybe you're really good at those multiple choice questions. Maybe you're an excellent essay writer. Great. Again, I'm going to say, let's have you spend time, you know, more time on the things that you're not um, as, you know, uh, uh, confident in, right? Um, then I want you to think about what's commonly tested. What is the stuff that comes up over and over and over again? You know, I could write your crim question for you right now. You know, somebody is going to, you know, go to commit a crime. It's going to be a felony, probably burglary. During that, you know, experience, someone is going to die. So you've got felony murder. And then they're going to end up being, you know, chased by the police when, you know, another death will occur, right? Um, you can kind of predict that. So if you come to me and you're like, Jen, I really need help with um, understanding arson. I'm going to say, yeah, let's talk about arson. But more important is going to be felony murder, right? I want to make sure you know felony murder. I want to make sure you understand you know, the, the, what are the, the, you know, dangerous felonies, you know, um, what happens if, you know, a co-conspirator is killed, that kind of thing, right? So think about, you know, what is the stuff that comes up over and over and over again? What is the stuff that you know, well, what, what we're looking for in terms of how you're going to spend your time is what's the stuff that's maybe not your favorite, you know, stuff you kind of like, if I got to look at this again, and the stuff that's commonly tested. That's the place where you are going to get the greatest return on your investment of time. Is that place where you have, you know, this is not my strong suit and it's commonly tested. That's where you can put in just a bit of time and find and find that you end up doing quite well um, because you've you've addressed those areas of weakness. Um, just gonna check. Oh. <laughs> Celeste said McDonald's coffee isn't too bad. That's actually true. And they've actually done um, taste tests where they uh, have compared McDonald's coffee to other coffee and they it does relatively well. Um, I will say I'm a sucker for their Diet Coke. And, um, you know, once you've got the baby bar behind you and you have some free time, there are tons of conspiracy series, theories about why McDonald's Diet Coke is the best Diet Coke. Um, Really, I think it's probably fine. Um, but hey, by the way, as long as we're talking about caffeine, one thing I'm going to tell you, know, I kind of gave you guys the mom's speech a minute ago and said, hey, make sure you're getting enough rest, make sure you're getting enough exercise, make sure that you're you know, spending time with your family, doing the things that allow you to be human. Um, one of the things that we're going to tell you is that this is not the time to decide you want to you know, quit smoking or give up caffeine or whatever, right? Which is not to say that we don't care about your health and we don't want you to be well, but doing one thing that is, you know, challenging and stressful and requires a change in your routine at a time is enough, right? So, you know, if you're like, Jen, I don't, I'm not taking the baby bar for a hot minute. Um, I want to make sure that I've got my caffeine addiction under control before the baby bar rolls around. Great do that now. But if the baby bar is coming up for you, maybe you just live with that caffeine addiction until, you know, the, the, the bars behind you. So think about, you know, the fact, you know, as we think about like, what are the things we can take off of our plate? What can we do to make life simpler? Don't make life more complicated for yourself by trying to adjust, you know, your routines tremendously. Um, like we said before, think about what you're good at in terms of the subject matter. 
Then in terms of the individual topics within that subject, and think about what skills you're good at. So are you good at writing essays, but you struggle with multiple choice? Think about that, right? And adjust that you know, pre-planned schedule according to your own individual strengths and weaknesses. When you first begin studying, I want you to focus on understanding. And so earlier, Celeste mentioned the open book study method. And, and as I say, we kind of have a mind meld sometimes because I want you to think about your, um, I want you to be using that open book study method uh, as well, right? And and we've got a whole office hour on that. So um, <clears throat> that is something that those of you who, who elect to do Barmax will have access to that office hour but basically what we mean is, you know, hey, you've got your, your question in front of you and, you know, you realize, okay, so the guy like sent his offer and then the other guy faxed something back to him and then he responded with an email and, and what do I do with this? And so maybe what you do is you grab your book and you look that up. And there are some of you I know who are thinking, well, what good does that do me if I look it up? Here's the thing. There's two different kinds of assessment. There's what's called formative assessment, which is assessment to help you learn. And then there's summative assessment, which is evaluating whether or not you know something. All we're doing at this moment is formative assessment. It's just, hey, you didn't know that mailbox rule as, as well as you thought you did. Go look it up. Fabulous. Keep evaluating that essay. Keep writing it. Keep you know um, exploring that topic. And then, you know, like, hey, I need a little bit more help with um, um, the, the mailbox rule topic. The other thing I'm going to say is you want to remember that for most of us, we're going to learn better when we have a problem to solve, right? Um, so this is, again, sort of a, a feature that is unique to adults and the way that adults learn, right? So, you know, second grade kids are like, hey, today we're going to talk about giant squid. And they're going to be like, I love it. You tell a grown-up, we're going to spend an hour today talking about the giant squid. And the grown-up is going to say, why? I got other things to do, right? Um, another way to put it is that there's this just-in-case learning, which is you know stuff that you know just in case you need it. And then there's just-in-time learning, where you learn something and you immediately get to put it to the test. Most of what we do as adults in our real life is going to be um, <clears throat> just in time learning, right? You probably didn't pull out your DVD player instruction manual and read that cover to cover when you got the DVD. Maybe you turned to the part that was on like setting it up and then you, you put it away, right? Because um, you didn't need it at that moment. But once you, um, you know, began to... Uh, uh, you know, have a problem with your DVD player, that's where you started looking that up, right? You pulled out that inst player instruction manual and figured out how to solve the problem. And you probably remembered it better because of that. So I'm going to encourage you to just tap into that and, and don't be afraid to look up, you know, material as you are writing. Um, don't be afraid to have that book open next to you as you're doing your multiple choice questions. If you find that there's an area of weakness, I want you to keep um, what a friend of mine calls the list of things I don't know. Um, and lots of different ways to keep this list. Uh, maybe you have a little bit at the end of your outline where you're like, hey, these are the things that I don't know in torts. Maybe you go through your outline and you're like, hey, I thought I knew um, products liability, but it turns out I needed a little bit more study with that. And so you highlight it in red. Um, maybe you make yourself a handwritten flashcard. Um, I <clears throat> would sometimes suggest having a binder, right? And maybe what you do is you just have subject dividers, quartz, crim, um, um, contracts, and you are, you know, Keep, just keeping a running list of the stuff you know you don't know, right? Great. Let's spend your time on that. That's stuff that's important that I want you to make sure you know. When you're first studying, I don't really want you to worry too much about the timing piece of it. If it's taking you, you know, longer than an hour to write an essay because you're looking things up, I'm fine with that. 
um, in the beginning, you're writing that essay to sort of get a sense of how stuff is tested. You're writing that essay to get an opportunity to practice writing the essay. You're writing that essay to see what you do and don't know so that you can, you know, keep your list of things you don't know. Um, and I'm not super worried about timing. I just want you to worry about like, what do I know? How's my writing? Or what do I know from my multiple choice? How's my multiple choice taking going? Let's say that to get an essay you really love, it takes you an hour and a half. Great. The next week, maybe you say, I'm going to take an hour and 20 minutes. And the week after that, maybe you say an hour and 10 minutes. And you're gradually reducing that time so that you, you, know, you can write the, hour, the essay in the time that's available to you before exam day. Um, and, and really think about um, making sure that you have some practice exams where you're doing, um, you know, four essays back to back and you have that opportunity to experience what is it like to do that? Um, because it's different than taking, you know, a three or four hour law school exam that's all on one topic. Uh, and it's different than writing one essay, you know, reviewing it, taking a little break to grab some coffee, coming back and writing another essay. So I would suggest you do that at least twice to try to get a sense of, you know, do I have the energy to do this? Can I sort of concentrate for that long? Um, you know, or do I find myself just getting so, so exhausted that I, I am not thinking clearly, in which case you got to work on building that stamina. Um, or, you know, if you're somebody where it's like, well, I tend to spend, you know, an hour and a half on the first question and then an hour on the second question, and then I'm running out of time for the last two questions, practice ahead of time so you can work on that. Some of you may have test anxiety, right? Where it's time to do the test and now you're just like, oh, so anxious and your hands are sweaty and your, your heart's pounding and it, you know, your mouth is dry and you can't really even quite understand what they're asking. And you know, you know that, but what even was it? I can't remember. You got a little bit of anxiety. <clears throat> there are two things that we know are effective for test anxiety. One is so-called over-preparation. So if, you know, person X just needs, you know, I don't know, an hour and a half with a particular topic, the person with anxiety might need two and a half hours, right? Not necessarily because they don't understand it, but so that they can reassure themselves that they do understand it. And so taking that extra time helps to build uh, or helps to prevent that anxiety. Then you've got things like, um, uh, you know, the, the other effective thing for anxiety, uh, test-taking anxiety, is going to be doing the exam under test conditions. So think about, you know, we've all seen on TV the person who's afraid of flying, right? And so they go see a psychologist who um, helps them deal with that phobia. Like first you look at some pictures of airplanes and then you watch a movie about an airplane and then you actually get on an airplane that's on the ground and you're gradually desensitizing yourself. You can do the same thing to a certain extent with your test taking uh, anxiety. And you can say, you know, um, I am anxious enough that, you know, I need to sit down here and, and practice doing this under exam conditions, right? So in the beginning, take all the time you want, have your book open next to you, keep track of what you don't know so that you can spend more time with it. Um, as you get closer to the exam day, though, you know, that's the time to be, you know, not wearing uh, your bunny slippers, put on some, you know, real shoes, sit in an uncomfortable chair and time yourself. Make sure that you can get it done in the time. Um, all right. So that's great, Jen. Um, what do I do next, right? I've, I've thought about, you know, what are my non-negotiables? I've made my list of what I do and don't know. I've thought about skills. I've thought about subjects. I've got all of this stuff. What do I do next? So the next thing that I want you to do is step one, I want you to be specific, right? Um, and again, this is part of like being realistic about who we are as human beings. If we write down study towards you're going to like, you know, turn on the torts lecture and you're going to be taking notes for a minute. And the next thing you know, you're writing, you know, little doodles on the side of your page. Or, you know, you're going to say to yourself, um, you know, write a torts essay. 
And then you're going to spend 20 minutes of the hour you had for the essay looking up, you know, what essay you want to write and kind of, oh, I don't really like that one. Let me write a different one. And by the time that, you know, you finally get to writing it, 20 minutes is going to have passed. And then you'll be like, well, you know, with that kind of thing, right? Or if you're me, you're like, okay, it's time for me to do this. I'm going to go make myself a cup of coffee. And then you go to make yourself a cup of coffee and you realize you're out of milk. And so you run to the grocery store real quick to get milk, but that turns into a full-fledged grocery shopping adventure. And by, the, you know, you get home, you got to put the groceries away. And then you realize, you know, you left your mug in the sink. And so you need to do some dishes. And the studying doesn't happen. One of the keys to overcoming that is to be specific about what you're going to study. So it's not study torts. It's, you know, listen to lecture sections one and two of torts. It's take notes on lecture sections one and two of torts or write, you know, the first torts essay question or um, submit that contracts question for feedback or it's, you know, um, review towards flashcards and, and set a specific number, right? You're going to review 20 of them or whatever, right? Um, here's the other thing that that allows you to do. Um, you're going to know whether or not you achieved your goal, right? If I write study towards and I read a couple of pages, I'm like, hey, I did the thing, right? But if I write, listen to lectures, you know, one lecture sections one and two, I know whether or not I did that. I can then plan accordingly. So I want you to get as specific as you can. It's also going to make it feel less overwhelming, right? Study torts, like the whole thing. Do I just, how do I, what do I do? But if you think about breaking it into smaller, more manageable tasks, you're going to know whether or not you achieved those tasks and you're going to um, be able to, it, it doesn't feel so much like, you know, a huge mountain of material that you just have to learn. And like, how do you do that in such a short period of time? I'm like, ah, let's write it down, right? Um, I'm also going to suggest that you assign it times. So, you know, some of us are going to use our phones. Some of us are going to use, you know, a um, paper planner. I'll show you that um, some of us may use both. Some of us may use something that's on our computer. You know, this is my paper planner. Uh, it says, all you need is love and a cat. And it's got, you know, daily schedules, weekly schedules. Sure, fine. Um, you know, and, and sometimes I hear from folks, well, you know, I don't really like keeping a calendar like that. I'm, you know, kind of, I want things to be a little bit freer, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Um, but most attorneys are on, you know, a schedule where they are keeping track of their time and they are scheduling their time. So getting in the habit of that now is a good thing. So, you know, don't just write down study torts, you know, uh, uh, and don't just write down, listen to torts lecture one and two, write, write down, you know, study torts lecture one and two uh, from eight to 10 a.m right? Or, or when are you going to do those things? Now, here's the thing. God forbid the kid gets sick from eight to 10 and you end up, you know, in the um, urgent care. Okay. You know, you got to find that two hour block somewhere else in your uh, schedule, right? Things happen. Don't get married to that schedule. Just know that like, Hey, I had planned to do it at this time. That time is no longer available to me for whatever reason. Where can I find other time for this? Um, so think about, you know, all of that. Um, and one thing I would say is think about all of the possible things you could do, right? So you could listen to lectures. You could take notes as you listen to lectures. You could um, create and revise your own outlines. You could do our pre-made flashcards. You could make your own flashcards. You could make flow charts. You could do essay questions. You could outline essay questions. You could do multiple choice questions. You, you know, make that list and think about what is most effective for you, right? Um, what did you do throughout law, you know, that first year of law school? What did you do before law school? Um, you know, all of that kind of thing. There's no silver bullet. It's not like there's one magic thing I can give you. And if you do that thing, you'll be successful. It's all about thinking about what works for me. What do I like doing, right? What, what is, you know, good for me? And like we said, think about, you know, the time that you have available to you. So if you know, like, look, I work eight to five, 
I am th- that time in the morning is just like, I- I'm, you know, getting up in the morning and I got to get myself ready and I got to get the kids ready and I got to pack lunches. And like, I just, that time is not available to you. Okay. Then you're studying, you know, from when you get home until you know, later on at night, right? Um, whatever time you actually have available to you, once you've put in your, um, you know, non-negotiables, that's where you're putting this stuff. And I want you to start with what is the stuff that's most effective for you and the stuff that is your weakest area. So you want to make sure you're doing what's most effective about the topics that you know you need the the time for. And you want to think too about when you have energy, right? And when you have um, the, the best ability to focus on uh, the task at hand. So, you know, if you're not a morning person, you know, don't be scheduling yourself to write essays in the morning and recognize that there may be some challenges here, right? It may be that like, okay, you're not writing essays in the morning on weekdays, but realistically, in order to find time to write essays at all, it may be something you have to do um, during, you know, uh, uh, the weekend morning times, right? So kind of what's the time that's available to you? What's most effective for you? And, you know, when can you make the best use of that time? All right. That's great, Jen. You keep telling me to like, think about what I'm good at and what I'm not good at and all that. What, what should I be doing? I would say roughly your time should be e- divided equally between um, your practice, meaning you know, outlining essay questions, writing essay questions, doing multiple choice questions, and what I would call knowledge acquisition, which is the listening to lectures, reviewing outlines, writing your own outlines, reviewing flashcards, doing flowcharts. Think about it kind of being half and half. What I hear from some folks is, Oh my gosh, this crazy lady wants me to start writing essays straight out the out of the gate. I can't do that. Or doing multiple choice questions straight out of the gate. Like there's no way. Here's the thing. So first off, remember you're doing this open book, so it will help you with your learning. And because you're doing that multiple choice question from the very beginning, it's going to help you acquire those skills that you need and it's going to help you focus your um learning on what's commonly tested, right? You can totally go down a rabbit hole into like, oh, well, you know, what about, you know, the difference between strict liability and products liability and, you know, negligence and products liability, which could be super interesting, but how valuable is that, right? Like how useful is that to you in terms of what's commonly tested in terms of what you need to know in order to be successful? So make sure that you're you're spending your time according to what's going to get you the, the biggest bang for your buck, right? Uh, what are the subtopics that are going to be most tested? And how are you going to know what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what's commonly tested? How are you doing skills-wise? Unless you start, you know, right out of the gate with, with practicing. Um, and that is a, a really good way to also help with learning and memorization. So um, I tell this story all the time, but I find it super fascinating. One of the first uh, sort of experiments they ever did in terms of learning was that they took a group of kids that were um, factory workers, right? So this is, I don't know, Victorian era, and um, or I guess maybe Edwardian era, we'll say it that way. And, and these kids are working in the factory and they uh, teach them a poem. Okay. These are not kids that are going home to read this poem. They're just learning this poem because these teachers came by and taught them the poem. One group of the kids, they had them um, immediately afterwards, you know, well, what was the first line of the poem? And what was the poem about? And, you know, kind of reflect on it, quiz them on it. Um, The other group went straight back to work. They came back a week later. And what they found was that the kids who had been tested on that material remembered it much better than those who had not been tested. And that gets back to like that idea of formative assessment. Like, do you know it? Do you not know it? Um, You know, uh, and and helping you learn it in addition to just evaluating whether or not you understand it. The other thing I'm going to mention is that, you know, I I think our natural tendency sometimes is to, okay, I'm going to spend, you know, two weeks learning torts and I'm just going to like get it, man. I'm going to totally understand it because I'm going to get do a deep dive into torts. Here's the thing, um, you know, if it's been a while since that first year of law school, you might need to do that, right? You might need to do that deep dive. Um, but 
For most of us, what's going to be more effective is what's called interleaving. And it's the idea that you're not necessarily sticking to one subject. You're forcing your brain to go from torts to um, contracts to crim to contracts again, back to torts. How about another moment of crim? It's going to force your brain to pay attention because you're, you're not like, oh, you know, it's contracts again. Great. You're, uh, and the um, practice of sort of jumping between the subjects has been shown to help with retention. So for a lot of us, there's that instinct that like, I'm going to do this deep dive. I'm really going to understand it. And, you know, if it's been a minute and you need to start with that deep dive, fine. But then I want you to think about interleaving and that idea of, you know, spending a bit of time here and then some time here and then, you know, some time over there and then, you know, and really mixing those subjects up. It's also going to mean that you're not going to have that experience of, you know, yeah, I spent two weeks on torts, but then I spent two weeks on prim and two weeks on contracts. And so now it's been more than a month since the last time I thought about torts and I've forgotten what I did that deep dive on. Interleaving will help you stay ahead of what's called the forgetting curve, meaning, you know, the longer it's been since you looked at something, the more of it you've forgotten. You know, just just going in between those subjects will often help you avoid that forgetting curve or to stay ahead of it a bit. So this might be an example of what your schedule could look like. So in this example, I was kind of imagining somebody who is um, definitely more of a morning bird than I am. These guys decided to, you know, they're going to get up early in the morning and they're going to go for a run or they're going to do yoga. And, you know, maybe this was something that they were doing already before they decided to start bar prep, but they're making time for that exercise. They're going to get home. They're going to, you know, take, a, you know, an hour to, you know, review their crim essay or, uh, you know, maybe they're going to, um, you know, if you're, if you're doing it open book, an hour might not be enough time to write the essay, but if you were doing it under timed conditions, it would be, um, or, you know, they're kind of you know, doing some issue spotting and then comparing it to the um, um, model answer. And then they're saying, hey, these were the things I missed. Let me put them on my list of things I don't know. But they're spending an hour diving into that essay. Then I'm assuming this person is needing to work like eight to 12. Then they're going to have lunch. Then they're going to do more work. Then they got to eat dinner because remember, you got to put in the, those non-negotiables of being a human being. And then, okay, it's time for you to listen to some lecture and, you know, really like, you know, start learning that law in depth. Um, then I want you to spend some time memorizing. What are you memorizing? The stuff from your list of things you don't know. And you probably need some time to wind down. So for as much as we're saying, you know, hey, don't forget to, um, you know, get enough sleep. Most of us can't turn our brains off like that. So maybe you need an hour to, you know, I don't know, take a shower, watch TV, um, you know, whatever it's going to be. So you want to make sure that you give yourself some of that time. And then notice, you know, I said, okay, so on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, this person's going to, instead of that essay in the beginning, they're going to do um, some multiple choice questions. Um and they're going to practice with that. And then maybe this person feels like they're they're struggling with contracts. So instead of doing three sections of the contracts lecture on Tuesday, they do two. And then they do two more on Saturday. And they're really taking their time with contracts. And then, you know, maybe Saturday afternoon, they're going to write two essays under timed conditions and submit them for feedback, right? Because you can do that. You can submit your essay and we will give you feedback. We'll talk about, is this a passing essay? And we'll say like, hey, here's your, you know, comments and, and thoughts about how to make this essay even better. Um, and notice that, you know, there's also time in here for things like spending time with your significant other or, you know, Whatever you do on Sunday morning that feeds, you know, is your self-care, your way of um, being in tune with yourself. Maybe it's, you know, having dinner with your family Sunday evenings. So, you know, yeah, this person is doing, um, you know, significant amounts of study here, but they're also making sure that they have time for work and kind of being, you know, doing the things that we need to do as human beings to stay happy and healthy and well. Um, so this is a sample schedule. Maybe this isn't you. Maybe you're like, Jen, you know, the only time I run is when something's chasing me. Great. Take that out of there. Um, you know, maybe you're like me and you're a bit of a, a night owl. So, you know, the idea of getting up at six in the morning, eh, yeah, you're going to set your alarm for six and also 605. 
around 610 and 615. And then finally, you know, you're going to get up after all of that time. Um, excuse me. In which case, great. You know, don't put all this stuff in the morning. Maybe, you know, that's happening for you in the evening and you're staying up later, right? Because that's kind of how I roll. Totally fine. Think of this as, as building blocks that you're using and you're personalizing to your own needs. As Jennifer said, we have tutors, including Jennifer and others who have a lot of experience working with first year law students and helping people um, overcome these hurdles. A lot of times until people turn in essays for a review, they don't realize, hey, this is an area where I need work. Writing a baby bar essay is very different than the forms of writing that we did in other contexts, um, for sure. Even when I went to law school, the legal writing that I had to do in law school was um, so different from what I, I had done as an undergrad that, you know, when I turned in my first assignment, I was sort of sh shocked that it wasn't well received because I was an excellent writer and always got strong grades on papers as an undergrad. And the first thing I turned in for a legal writing sample, you know, I was told I did it all wrong and I was, you know, personally offended. Um, so you want to go through that early rather than late. You want to turn in some essays for review. And if you realize, hey, this is an area where I need some one-on-one -on -one help, then um, tutoring is an option for that. So I want to just thank you, Jennifer, for kind of walking through these uh, plans about, not, you know, set your weekly schedule, but also plan what to do during those times. That's so important, um, you know because we can all fall victim to the, well, I'll go get a cup of coffee or gee, I have to decide how to start before I start. Right. So we want to kind of take the time ahead of time to say, okay, these are the chunks of work that I want to get through. And I want to make sure I'm using these principles of focusing on the areas that are going to be heavily tested that I'm not necessarily strong in already focusing on the skills I need doing lots of active practice and um, and focusing, um, you know, and, and making sure that you're doing a little bit of alternating so you're not spending a whole month on one topic and then forgetting it, you know, uh, what you had studied on the prior topic. That's important um, to at least do some refreshers along the way. So I think those pieces of advice especially are, are just going to be really helpful to our students. So thank you. Thank you for that, Jennifer. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for letting me talk about it. I yeah. it's something I'm, I'm passionate about, especially for those of you who are prepping for the first year law students exam, right? Like it's it's one of those things where um, for a lot of folks, it's been a minute since you've thought about some of these topics, and a lot of folks are balancing what else is going on in their lives, and so really being deliberate about what you're going to do is is important. So I appreciate being able to to talk about it. Right, and and I mean the exam, you know, it's. As, as we, you know, I mean, we all know that, that a lot of people who take it are not successful, but it is an exam that you can pass uh, with the right preparation. And if you need help, then get the help. Um, but it is, you know, definitely a doable exam. Um, I think a lot of people come at it who are just you know, not quite ready for what's coming their way. So get into uh, BarMax and um, get into practice essays and, and, and see how these things are tested so that you can be one of the successful people because we want to see you on that pass list. So um, with that, I think we're going to close out for today. Um, you can uh, reach us, you know, just reach out to us here at BarMax anytime. You can download our, the free version of our app if you want to take a look at it. Um, you would use the BarMax app and then you would go to my courses to select the course. I keep saying I'm going to leave, but I remember things to say. You were talking about some people are going to have better retention if they listen to the lecture while walking instead of listening while watching the outline, which is interesting. But because it's also an app, you can stick it on your phone and have it on your 
this is my phone. Yeah, it disappears if I put it over here. Um, but you can put it on your phone and have it on your earbuds, whatever, and do that and do your, you know, going for a walk or whatever your kind of routines are um, to keep your body moving and listening. If you learn well that way without necessarily seeing the words in front of you while you listen, or if that's a good way for you to review, because it's both an app and a website, you have that option. Okay, so get the free version of the app and uh, download it and then go to my courses, select California of FYLSC, and you'll be able to kind of see sample of of, uh, what the material will look like in the app. Um, Of course, you won't get all the content unless you buy the paid version, but it's because we're a business. Um, But we do want to see you pass. So uh, we hope to help you out with that. And thank you. Thank you guys for attending today. And thank you, Jennifer. Bye. Bye.